in clinical dietetics, if the gut works, say it. If the gut works, you use it. Hello everyone, my name is Kim. I am a registered dietitian nutritionist, a certified diabetes care and education specialist, and a certified nutrition support clinician. This video will be focusing specifically on nutrition support for the COVID-19 positive patient. While dealing, while treating patients that are positive for COVID-19, I have encountered some situations and some possible gray areas that I want to shed some light on, not only for myself, but for other disciplines such as doctors and nurses. Because, I mean, we can give all the medications that we want, but if you do not have a body that is well-nourished, that's like not having any gas for your car. You can't expect the engine to start up. And as well, feeding early has been showing, and I'm not going to get into the research, to have so much positive outcomes in decreasing morbidity as well as mortality. So today I just wanna answer a few questions for you. Um, so if you are a clinical dietitian or if you are someone that is interested in the COVID-19 or if you're a student, continue watching this video. So this is a very important question. Are we going to bolus feed or are we going to provide continuous feeding? And the answer for this is if you do have a COVID positive patient, you want to provide continuous feeding. And, and this is for enteral nutrition. This is for the patient that is laid up in the hospital bed, they're intubated. And the reason why you want to provide enteral nutrition is due to numerous reasons. The first one is we are seeing that in patients that are COVID-19 positive, they do have some insulin resistance so that their blood sugar is high. So when your blood sugar is high, the recommended nutrition support is to provide continuous feed. Additionally, continuous feeding is important because you want to cluster care. You don't want to provide a bolus feed when where the nurse goes into the room multiple times throughout the day and feed the patient. So you want to attach them to a kangaroo pump. You want to set that pump at whatever rate you calculated. And you want that kangaroo pump to give them a certain amount of nutrition infusion over the 24 hour period. This limits exposure to the nurse and hence the collaborative care team. So when I'm writing my nutrition prescriptions for patients that are COVID positive that are intubated, I'm writing only for continuous feed at this time. So gastric residual volumes are not a good indicator of aspiration or tolerance. And at this time, you don't wanna check gastric residual volume. I think in the Aspen guidelines, checking gastric residual volume is not recommended at all, especially during this time. When you're checking that gastric residual volume again, the nurse, the person that is checking the GRV, is increasing their exposure. And you want to limit that as much as possible. Also, evidence research is showing that gastric residual volume is not correlated to an increased aspiration risk or an increased tolerance risk. So it doesn't make sense to check the GRV. This is a very good question. It is okay to feed enterally when the patient is in the prone position. The only thing that needs to be done is you need to angle them at 10 to 25 degrees. This helps to decrease facial edema and also with aspiration. So being in the prone position actually does help to oxygenate the lungs a little better. At my hospital, we are currently putting patients in the prone position for 16 hours out of the 24 hours a day. But tube feeding, uh-uh, tube feeding does not stop. So this is a question that I had about three weeks ago. When you're on paralytics, and I'm not gonna name the specific paralytic that I came encounter with when I was dealing with a patient, but when you are on paralytics, there is no contraindication to tube feeding. The reason for that is, is the paralytic, well, the one that um, I encountered specifically, that patient was on a paralytic that impacted their skeletal muscles. 
the paralytic did not impact their smooth muscles whatsoever so just going back to the basics of anatomy and physiology your smooth muscles are what makes up the digestive tract so it is okay to enterally feed a patient or to feed a patient when they are on paralytics To feed or not to feed, that is the question. So typically when someone is on pressors, we don't want to feed if they're not hemodynamically stable. The reason why you don't want to feed if they're not hemodynamically stable and they're on pressors is because you run the risk, there's an increased risk of bowel ischemia and you don't want to kill that gut. However, if the patient is on pressors, from my experience, if they're on pressor, pressors and they're hemodynamically stable, then you can go ahead and feed, but you just need to watch that patient. So I know in my hospital setting, I'm having, um, you know, I'm hearing a lot of whispers in my ear, you know, to go ahead, Kim, and start this patient on parenteral nutrition. But we all know in clinical dietetics, if the gut works, say it, if the gut works, you use it. So the only time that enteral nutrition is contraindicated is unless you have a bowel obstruction, you have some type of ischemia, um, or if you have like a bowel bleed or even like a perforation. If you have a COVID positive patient and they have like a perforation or ischemia or obstruction and parenteral nutrition is indicated, when you do start parental nutrition, you want to make sure that you are monitoring the triglycerides because they may be on propofol and also other mechanisms which may be occurring that cause them to have high triglycerides. So enteral nutrition is indicated. It's okay to feed the patient um, via their gut instead of through their veins. And I just wanted to share some final thoughts. So every patient is different. I know when dealing with a nephrologist, because a lot of COVID patients, they may or may not have acute kidney injury, There's, it's important that you communicate because some nephrologists may say, hey, because they have acute kidney injury, maybe we're going to put them on continuous renal replacement therapy. So for the dietitian, it's important that you are monitoring the macro as well as micronutrients. For my patients that are on CRRT, which is the continuous renal replacement therapy, I have some physicians telling me that, you know, we need to have the vitamin A, we need to have the zinc, we need to have the B vitamins. While other physicians, nephrologists are telling me, well, we need to have the selenium, we need to have um, the copper and all these other things. So what I would say as a dietitian is you still need to individualize care. You need to weigh the pros and the cons to see what is the best possible outcome. So really, the physicians are coming to you as the nutrition expert, especially if you are a certified nutrition support clinician. So you need to individualize care and you need to stay abreast and update and up to date. Realize that you are the patient advocate. So this is the things that I have faced so far when dealing with the COVID-19 positive patient. If you are a clinical dietitian and you do have patients that are COVID positive, what are some things that you are facing? What are some questions that you want answered? Or if you know answers to any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments section below so that we can help each other while we are dealing with this novel virus. So thank you guys for watching. As usual, remember to comment, subscribe, like, and share this video. Bye-bye.